HCTV's W5. Here is Rick Westhead. Welcome back to W5. This weekend, one of the biggest sporting events on the planet takes place, the Super Bowl. And while all eyes will be on the players, increasingly fans are paying very close attention to the referees. From football to soccer, from baseball to hockey, officials are finding their calls being questioned, often followed by a lot of abuse. Millions of people are unhappy right now. The referee suck. Refs don't do their freaking job. They're ruining the game. Wake the fuck up! Referee. Why would any sane person want the job? And he is absolutely furious. Striped villains stuck in an impossible position between two opposing interests. Be with me. Every year, the microscope magnifies and the scrutiny escalates. Somehow, it has gotten worse than it's ever been. As a ref, you failed. Don't apologize anymore. Get the calls right. I don't wear Super Bowl rings, because I always wanted another one. If you wore one, why would you be hungry for the next one? The officials that work Super Bowl, they're at 99% accuracy on 2,400 plays. That's what it takes to get those. John Perry officiated for 19 NFL seasons. His track record as one of the sport's best earned him three Super Bowl appearances, two as head referee. I mean, you have fear, you have anxiety, you have joy, you have every emotion. Attention to Brownie, number 12, offense. You want the games to go well. I mean, he didn't throw it to him, but I mean, we oh. had a guy that was coming in there. But if there's nobody there, it's grounded. We want the game to be perfect. It will never be perfect. We are humans, we do make mistakes. They couldn't have screwed this up anymore, the officiating crew. That is just brutal. They just stink. Week in and week out, we're stuck with crap. We're stuck with junk. How does it feel when you know that you've blown a call? It feels awful. Last season, Perry earned the Super Bowl assignment. As he sat at home preparing, he watched the storm of criticism around NFL officials intensify. Breeze. Should have been a penalty. It is blatant pass interference. The most egregious missed call in the history of football. The integrity of the Super Bowl is in question. Every TV that you look at, you see the New Orleans no call. America's favorite sport is becoming unwatchable because of bad officiating. How will they officiate the Super Bowl? You need to fix this now. Super Bowl 53, 12 years of being a crew chief, I wanted my pregame meetings to have some emotion. They got a real glimpse of who John Perry is going to be. He's going to be the leader of men. Perry chose to make that his last game as an NFL referee. Few on the planet can relate to the pressures of officiating a game with those stakes. But Howard Webb can. He refereed the 2010 World Cup final. Right now, there is one man who matters. This is the showpiece that comes around once every four years, and the eyes of the world is watching that game. Put yourself in his boots. What a call to have to make. Webb stepped away from the game after refereeing his second World Cup in 2014, and eventually became head of MLS's professional referee organization. I mean, I'm looking for anything that I think I can feed back to the, uh, to the officials post-game that will enhance their future performances. He's using his experience to guide the current generation of officials. A veteran of the hostile world of European soccer, Webb understands how difficult and taxing it can be to execute in practice. You're being asked to have strong self-belief but that self-belief is being challenged all the time by the players. The Spanish are rushing over here to complain about this, and Heitinger is the latest to say to referee Webb, what are you going to do about this? You are dealing with people with big egos. You're dealing with people who are massively wealthy. They're trying to force you into making a mistake, and then when you do make a mistake, they go crazy at you. It's a red card! 
coming off field and coaches saying you're a disgrace and all that sort of thing. I've stood in showers after games <laughs> thinking, oh my goodness, you know, that, that, you know, what's going to be the fallout of that decision that I made in that game? <laughs> right through your being, you've got to have self belief and, you know, mental resilience. Ripping on the ref has been part of the fabric of sports for as long as they've existed. And most agree it comes with the territory. At the highest professional levels, abuse of officials is usually verbal. But at the lower levels of sport, abuse commonly takes more severe forms. Witnesses say it was a blatant assault. The coach was ejected for berating on-floor officials. That's when the assault took place. The frustration over what they thought were bad calls led the players to go after the ref. People say, well, you're paid to take it. No, we're not paid to take it. You definitely question yourself. Is it worth it? They lost a the game on it? No, York missed on the penalty shot to tie it to send it overtime. For more than 20 years, Grimsby, Ontario's Darrell Wolf has been a hockey referee. His career has taken him through the ranks of minor hockey and as high as the OHL. Let's be good. Wolf's experience is more common than those of Perry or Webb and relatable to thousands of amateur sports officials across Canada. Hey, we got the hit! You she let it go! I think some parents just have that mindset and they're stuck that, you know, little Johnny's gonna go pro and we're getting in their way as officials. It's a brand new whistle. I think it's pretty loud. If you want that to be two minutes, Clarky, it's gonna be a long night. I've had recycle bins thrown on the ice and littered with garbage. You know, I've had some people follow me out of the rink. Take your time, make sure you're all right, eh? Good. And then straight to the point of having your tires slashed and your car keyed. Eh, even the little kids think we're awful, eh? You can't do that anywhere else in society. It doesn't make sense. That type of acceptance comes with a potential cost. We have high school football teams that normally would play on a Friday night, but they're having to play on other nights because there's not enough officials. The numbers of the people that are leaving the world of officiating is a huge problem for sports, all sports. We're only as good as the people who start refereeing, and if too many stop, then the quality at the very top is, is, is limited. Oh! How did I score that? But for the refing community, passion outweighs the negativity that hangs like a cloud over their profession. Good, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for... Many are motivated by a deep childhood love for the sport they officiate, and a desire to dedicate their life contributing to those sports. Many people don't understand who we are, why we do what we do, but to us, we're the third team at the elite level. From the day I started back in 1989 to the day I finished, I probably thought about quitting 10 times. But each time I went back and picked the bag back up and cleaned my boots and went out and did it again the following week, born out of a love for the game and a desire to get as far as I could. A rink is a home away from home for me. Clean battle, clean, clean here. Watch your back. You're on the ice with potentially some of the best players in the world. This can be a thankless job at times. The sacrifices that you and your family have had to make, the physical and mental toll it takes, the criticism that you come under, why do it then? It's the love of the diamond, the love of the court, love of the gridiron, love of the game. Love of the game. Coming up. Fans are sick of it. They call them as they see them. And that's how the best games are officiated. Feel, art, gut. When W5 continues. Today's broadcasts have given fans unprecedented access to information. And watch how cool this, this is right here. And move me way up there. But it's also led to new levels of scrutiny. Viewers instantly have more angles than on-field officials. To counter that imbalance, sports leagues are attempting to harness the latest technology to level the playing field for the refs. I mean, that's naughty, isn't it? That's really... Really naughty. Well, I can only assume Howard Webb didn't get the ideal view of that. We've seen it on the replay. Far too many times, I didn't have the answer that I really wanted. This is a, a live TV game, there's millions watching, and everybody at home is going to know the answer, and I don't. 
Howard Webb oversees Major League Soccer's operation of Video Assisted Review, or VAR. The use of VAR sees 99% of our decisions as correct. Webb is applying a wealth of experience from a 25-year officiating career that included two World Cups. Most referees, if they're given the best angle, will get the right call. They make mistakes when they get caught, detached from play, or they get an obstructed view. Tools like VAR give refs a fail-safe, allowing a second look when needed. The Elder! There it is! Second goal! In the attacking phase of play, the build-up was an offside. Okay, roll from there. And he picks it up. And he picks it up. I'm going to recommend on-field review for offside prior to the goal. Okay, the referee's ready. Okay. I'm here. I'm ready. Okay, this is the kick point. The ball is going to play from here into the crossbar. Number 14 touches. Four. And 14 picks it up. Thank you. Offside. And the goal has been overturned. The days of goals clearly offside and allowed to stand, or players scoring with a hand, are pretty much things of the past. But officiating technologies like VAR are still far from perfect. VAR is just a video system. Video is there for people to make a decision. Unfortunately, you've got referees making bad decisions. We're already annoyed by too much time being spent on replay review. There's so much gray to begin with. All VAR has done is make more gray. If we're going to strive for correctness, some things that were, you know, close, maybe wrong, but, you know, were just part of the game, those are going to be identified now. By the book, correct. In the world of common sense, ridiculous. All this god technology, however it's supposed to work, screws us. All sports are struggling to maximize accuracy while preserving the essence of the game. The goal is to minimize error in contentious calls. And perhaps no sport has a more scrutinized call than baseball. Strike three, and Robles doesn't agree. He is furious. Boy, everybody is having trouble with the strike zone. But a radical new innovation strike. is throwing out over a century of tradition. What do you think that was? In the independent Atlantic League, Major League Baseball is testing the controversial technology of robo-umps, an automated strike zone. The commissioner of the Atlantic League is Rick White. In a world where the players and managers have all asked for consistency, we've standardized the process. The system, called TrackMan, uses radar sensors to determine the strike zone which is created using a player's height and the outer edges of the plate. TrackMan analyzes each pitch instantaneously and relays the call to the home plate umpire through an earpiece. Strike. But players and managers have still found a way to take it out on the ump. They are still frustrated. Strike. Brian DeBrower works with the new technology. They skip me and go right up to the machine and direct their anger up there. The uh, robo-umpires in the Atlantic League certainly getting some attention. Robo-umpires? Some type of futuristic game? Well, that does not compute. Frank, you are out of here. Mark Mason manages the York Revolution. There's nothing you can do because the home plate umpires, they just point to their ear, you know, basically like, I'm just calling what they tell me to call. Strike. Swagger man wants to go home early tonight. It's the inconsistencies and the outliers strike that have frustrated them. Yeah, that was a tough one. If TrackMan was a human umpire, they wouldn't last in this league for very long. Oh, oh. thank God. Umpire Jim Clayton is adjusting to his new role. Calling balls and strikes by far is the hardest task any official of any sport has to do. I found that to be a very challenging thing that I really enjoyed doing. And so now it's well, I just have to wait and listen for what the machine says. What would you say to an umpire who made the case that their authority is being undercut? I would argue exactly the opposite. Ball players, coaches, and managers used to constantly question the umpire's judgment. 
the occurrence of constant questioning has diminished. The technology is imperfect, but constantly improving. When the computer gets it right, its eye is better than a human umpire's eye. And Major League Baseball plans to test robo-umps at this year's spring training. This is the way of the world. There's more technology, which means we're going to use it. And it would be silly to bury your head in the sand and pretend like it's not going to happen. Replay has stopped the game. Well, they're reviewing something. Now, which play are they reviewing? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> what are we doing here? I'm with you, boy. Come on. I almost feel like they're paralyzed. There's no gut to the game anymore. And that's how the best games are officiated. Feel, art, gut. John Perry is a former NFL referee who officiated three Super Bowls. This season, he joined ESPN as an analyst. The defender lowers and leads with his helmet. We had seven different camera angles in slow motion. Of course, we have freeze frame technologies. I mean, how difficult is that crew making those decisions in less than one second? They go stands there because it is not clear and obvious. Let's embrace what he did. The ruling on the field stands. Wow. Technology is a double-edged sword. It's making strides towards correcting fixable mistakes, but it is also amplifying errors to new levels. Super Bowl 53 again, I think we had 106 camera angles. 106. They're not gonna miss anything. They're gonna show every one of those to show America, you know what, this was the play, this was the call. Like how many things can you miss in plain view at that moment of importance in a game? Not only can they complain in the stands, then they can tweet about it. Then they can show the video of it. Look how bad this call was. How in the world did the official miss this? The nature of sports is that refs will still face blowback. The call on the ice is confirmed we have no goal. And he was right. Good call. People don't understand that we've only reversed 20% of the challenges. The ruling on the field stands. It will be Philadelphia's ball. If we could stop less, change more, I think we end up with a better product. By the way, Major League Baseball is considering outfitting umpires with microphones so they can announce the results of replay reviews, which if approved, may help the umps better connect with players and fans.